Hi, in today's video I've got an idea to make a card on the Scan and Cut machine using this Bird Ballad Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up. Now I think this has to be one of the most used Designer Series papers I've ever bought. I've literally only got I think two pages of 12 by 12 and then the rest are all scraps. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my design on the Scan and Cut machine. So I'm going to come into patterns, into basic shapes, and there's a pattern in here on page 11, and it's the one in the top right hand corner. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose the rotate button and I'm going to rotate it to the left 90 degrees. So it looks like a little house and I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to select this icon here which has got the arrows going horizontal and vertical and that lets me alter the height and the width independently. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the height five and a half inches. And then I'm going to make the width three and a half. I'm going to say I want three and set. So there's two and here's my third. Now my third, I'm going to make a quarter inch smaller. So with it selected, I'm going to come back to the editing icon, back to the icon that lets me adjust the height and width. And I'm going to take the width down to 3.25. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio again and make this 3.25. And on the height, I'm going to make it 5.25. That's going to be the matting layer that I think I'm going to use on the front of the card. So I'm just going to put that down there out of the way. So I'm going to select the top one and make sure it's pushed up into the top left hand corner. And then I'm going to select the next one and push that one up to the top. And I'm going to overlap it slightly on the left one. Now you can zoom in and you can generally see where the box that you've got outlined in red overlaps the black line of your other design. So now I'm going to use the three red boxes. I'm going to choose the first box on the left which allows me to tell the machine I only want certain parts of what's on this mat selected and it's only these two I want selected at the moment so I'm going to say okay now it's highlighted both of those I'm going to say okay and I'm going to come to the weld icon and see if they're overlapped enough to weld and they are and it's saying to me okay to weld now if they if they weren't overlapped enough it may say something like some shapes are not are unable to be welded or something like that just move your design over a little bit more you want you don't want it overlapping too much because you want to obviously keep when this is folded in half you want to try and keep your your, your dimensions of your height and your width but it needs to be overlapped enough so that it will weld so it's giving me a preview now of showing me what that's going to look like and I'm going to say okay because that's actually what I want OK and OK again. So now I've got my welded base card and I've got my layer here that's a quarter of an inch smaller than one half of what will be this card. So I'm going to save that to the machine now. And that's saved in the machine memory in pattern number 249, I'm going to say OK. So I've decided I'm going to make this matting layer smaller. So with it selected, I'm going to come back into the editing icon and go into the adjusting of the size. And I'm going to try it at five by three, but I may even make it smaller. So I'm going to 
select the box that allows me to adjust the height and width independently and I'm going to take it down to five and take the width down to three. But I may adjust this again. I think it needs to be smaller. I'm going to try the height on five and a half. Okay, so I've got the card, the matting layer I'm going to have at four and a half inches high and 2.75 inches wide, so two and three quarter inches wide and see how that goes. I may not use it, but because I want to add some extra bits onto this, I think this needs to be smaller. So I'm going to say OK, OK, and I'm going to save it again into the machine. And it's saying to me, do you want to overwrite the design that you saved or create it as a new one? I'm going to overwrite it so it'll stay at that 249 design. And I'm going to say OK. So now I'm going to select the matting layer. Go to the editing icon and hit delete just to delete it off this mat for now, just so I can cut this. And I'm now going to load up my scan and cut mat with a piece of pool party card. I've not made this, it's just an idea in my head. So I'm just taking you along with me. I'm going to pop the mat into the machine. I'm going to say OK and do a background scan and go. OK, so that's got enough room on there easily. So I'm going to say OK and cut. That's cut through, so I'm going to say OK and unload. So this is what we've got so far. I'm going to bring in a piece of Whisper White regular card because I'm wanting to do some stamping as well. I'm going to load this into the machine. I'm going to click the home button and say OK to delete all patterns. Go to pattern, save data to the machine, go to the last page, say OK. I'm going to select the house and delete it. And now I'm going to cut my matting layer. Okay, unload. So that's now my matting layer that I may or may not use on the front of here. But I'm going to add some extra bits to this. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring in a piece of the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. load that into my mat and I'm going to try and cut a circle around these birds on this right hand side 
I'm going to hit the home button, say it's okay to delete all those patterns. I'm going to come to pattern, basic shapes, scroll to page three and find a circle. I'm going to make the circle an inch and a half. And I'm going to say set. I'm going to do a background scan and scan this piece of card in. I'm going to bring my circle over. I'm just going to come into the editing icon and zoom in and I'm going to zoom to 400%. I'm going to scroll along to the right hand side and then come down to my little birds here. And I just want to, I think, I'm not so sure whether an inch and a half might be too much, but we'll see. We'll try an inch and a half or maybe I might just try one inch and a quarter and see how that looks. Say OK, zoom in again, zoom into 400%, scroll along because my pattern's on the right hand side. That might be better actually. I'm going to say OK, OK, OK again just going to change my blade slightly and say cut. Going to say OK and unload the mat. And that's going to give me the two little birds. I'm going to bring back in my piece of pool party because I wanted to cut a circle from that and I forgot. So I'll load that back into the machine. I'm going to go back, bring my circle over here because I've got my paper up here. Go into the editing icon and I'm going to make this one and a half now. So it's a quarter of an inch bigger than the circle I've just cut from the designer series paper. I'm going to say OK. I'm just going to position it in the top left because I know I've got card in that area on my mat. I'm going to say OK, OK and cut. OK, unload. So I think that's all my scan and cut cutting for now. So this is what we've got so far. So I think that's going to go on there like so. But I'm going to do some stamping and I've got some bits to add on to here as well. OK, so just for ease, I'm going to bring in my paper trimmer. I'm going to load this piece of card up now so that the bottom of this v-shape here is in my cutting track and I'm going to use my score blade to score it I'm going to fold it over line up my edges and burnish. Now, just going to bring my trimmer in. So, on the reverse side of the pattern paper I've just cut the circle from, I've got this plain pink and I want to try and tie that in because I'm going to do some colouring. So, I think what I'm going to do, let me just measure how, how long they are. I'm just going to chop OK, 
Okay, so I've got a piece of, this is four inches long. It doesn't matter how long it is. I just need it to be longer than this angle here. So I am going to cut, I think, half inch strips. So I've got three pieces that are four by a half an inch. I'm thinking to put a piece on the bottom, like so, and then these two pieces are going to line up on the edges like this, and then I'll chop those off. So I think it's kind of coming together. Then this I think is gonna sit on there, and I'm gonna do some stamping on this. So, let's stick these down first. So, I'm going to apply some glue just on the bottom of the card. <clears throat> and position this so it overlaps. equally I'm going to apply some glue on the top here but hopefully it will turn out quite cute so now I'm going to bring in my scissors and these are my old scissors that I use when I'm doing anything with glue Trim those off. And this is how it's looking now. I'm going to get rid of the silicone mat. This, I'm thinking, is going to sit on here. This is going to sit on here. And I'm going to do some stamping. That's my, my thought. going to see actually if I can remove these because I actually think I want them longer let's see if we can get rid of some of this paper so I'm just going to cut another couple of pieces half an inch wide because I think it's going to look better if it overhangs a bit so let's try it again so I'm going to apply some glue I'm going to overlap it on the top because then I know I can get it lined up properly. Try this again, let's see how we go. As I say, it was an idea that was in my head and I've not done it, so you know this is the process I work through when I'm making cards. Just covered in glue now. So I'm going to trim this off again so this is flush get rid of those gluey bits that's the only thing about using Tombow I tend to get it all over my fingers just 
just needs a little bit of glue on the bottom there. Let's just hold that down for a minute. So now I'm bringing in my paper snips because these are nice and sharp. I think I'll cut them about a quarter of an inch straight down on either side, just so I've got a little bit of an overhang. Yeah, so that's better. So that's how that's going to look and then the card's going to open like that. I'm going to bring in the free as a bird stamp set and I'm going to stamp this design and some of the flowers. I'm going to bring in my stamping pierce mat which I've got covered in a piece of white paper and I've just taped it together on the back. I'm going to bring in my little house and I want to stamp the birds near the bottom. I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black because I'm going to be colouring this in with blends. I'm just going to ink that up, bring this in. I'm going to bring it towards me so that I can see it better. And then just try and stamp the birds. I'm not particularly bothered if it goes off the bottom of the card. So that's how that's looking. I've got some scrap whisper white that I cut the house out of. So I'm going to stamp some of the little flowers and again I'm just using the Memento Tuxedo Black. I don't know how many I'm going to need, but I'll do a few just in case. Just going to clean my stamp on my Simply Scrub, which is on the side here. I'm going to put the leaves on. I'm going to put the leaves on this block and I'm going to stamp some leaves as well. Again, I'm not sure how many I'll need, but I will. I'll cut three, I think. So I'm going to put these to one side. And now I'm going to put this on the mat and hopefully let me get rid of that, I don't need that bit there. And hopefully cut these out. Not sure how well you're going to see this, but I'm going to hit the home button, say OK to delete all patterns. I'm going to get to scan. You've seen me do this lots of times. Direct cut, machine and say go. I'm going to isolate the area so the machine knows what it is I'm trying to cut. I'm going to say, OK, wait for it to recognise. There's a little bit of a stray mark up there, so I'm going to hit the ignore object size and just take the height up just to get rid of that. I'm going to say, OK, OK, go to the distance outline, make it 0 0.04 and say OK, OK and cut. That's all finished now, so I'm going to unload the mat. I'm just going to lift these off and then I'm ready, hopefully, to start colouring. That's OK, so I've got all my bits and pieces. We've got another flower there. 
So, let's see what we've got. So, the colours that I've got in the card, I've got Pool Party and Petal Pink. And then in the birds, there's a um, crumb cake and petal pink and there's a green and there's a, a bit of a, um, that I think is petal pink as well. So I'm going to stick this to this for now because that's pretty straightforward. Just put some wet glue on the back and attach that to my circle. And let that sit. going to bring in my mat again. So I've got light crumb cake, light pool party, light petal pink and light old olive. I'm going to colour the branch in crumb cake. I'm not doing any shading, I'm just using them the blends as a, a colouring tool. I'm not um, expert enough to be doing shading and that kind of thing. I'm going to bring in the light old olive and I'm going to use the fine point end and just colour in these leaves. And if you've not used our blends before, they're alcohol markers, so they dry more or less instantly. They don't leave any street marks and there's a fine end and there's a, a brush tip end. And when you put the lids on, the easiest way I find is to put them down on a flat surface and listen for the click and you know the lids on properly. If you don't put your lids on properly, the alcohol will dry up and your markers will be useless. And as I say, these are alcohol markers, so these are not refillable, like our Stampin' Right markers, which you can fill, I believe, with your inks. I think the ends pull off and you can fill them up but these are blends, alcohol blends. So I've just got a couple more leaves to do here. So just, you know, very simple colouring. I'm going to use the petal pink. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to use the fine end and I'm just going to colour in the flowers and then I think I'm going to give I'm going to try and kind of take my colour inspiration from the colours in here. So I think I'll give a little bit of green And then use the brush end of the pool party. And just blend that all in. I'm not bothered about the beak. I'm colouring the beak in, in blue as well. And I'm using the pool party right up to and over the green to kind of, you know, blend that in. 
and then this one I might just add a bit of the crumb cake just down the edge and blend that in. Like so. So I've kind of just copied the colours that are in here. So that's that and I'm thinking I'm going to stick that on there but I might add in some leaves so let's bring in the brush end of the old olive again and just colour in these leaves and I'm just going to colour in the stem as well, all in green. I might not use all these, but at least if I colour them, I've got them and then I can play around with the design and see how we're looking. I'll just do this smaller one, I might use the smaller one. And then I think I'll use, might use a couple of these. So I think what I might do is bring in a slightly deeper pink. So this is Light Flirty Flamingo. We'll see how this looks. Just going to colour it in with the brush tip end. So I think I'm going to start assembling. So I'm going to pop that up. So this is going on dimensionals. So I'm going to put one dimensional. And I'm going to put that there. Then I might add in... I don't want to overwhelm it, so I might just add in one actually, one leaf or let's just see. Actually, I might put two in. So I think I'm going to glue these in and I'm going to glue them underneath <clears throat> the um, circle. A little bit of wet glue because that will give me a bit more wiggle room. And tuck that in. That one under there. Just press those down so they start to stick. <clears throat> I'm going to bring in some mini dimensionals. And see whether I need one flower or more. Yeah, one I think is enough. So it's going to use one flower and put that just on the edge of the circle on a dimensional. They can be used another time. I'm going to bring in some basic rhinestones and just pick up one of the small ones and pop that in the middle of the flower.
And these cases, by the way, you can buy on my shop. You buy them in a set of four. And then you can print the sleeves out and put them so that you, you can mark them up so that when they sit on your shelves, you know what's in them. Right, let's see how we go. I'm going to pop this up, I think. So I'm going to put dimensionals on the back. So let me put my lid on my glue. So I'm using big dimensionals now because obviously there's a bigger area to cover. If you press them down in the middle with your fingernail, they start to lift and it makes them easier to peel off. Now that's going to sit on there like so. So there is my little birdhouse card, all made from simple shapes in the scan and cut machine. Opens up like so. I could cut, I could make the card shape in the machine a quarter of an inch smaller and cut a white insert for that. But that's my card, what do you think? So that was all made, not been made before, just had the idea and just thought I'd try it. And I think it looks adorable, don't you? Leave me a comment under the video letting me know if you're going to give it a try, if you've got this um, bird ballad paper. If you haven't, I honestly really do suggest that you buy it. It's beautiful. I never thought when I saw the catalogue come out a few months ago, I never thought I would like this paper but there were a couple of sheets that I liked the reverse side of, like the pink and white polka dot. So I thought I'd buy it and give it a try. And as I said at the beginning, it's my most used ever designer series paper. I virtually haven't got any left and I am thinking about buying another pack. So that's today's project. Anyway, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.